Okay, weekly news. Um, what we're going to do, quick roundup of what's going on, what cars we've got in the workshop at the moment, and then we're going to go over to the B20 P18 there, which is, well, a bit of a tail. Let's go back to that. Okay, Ludo arriving tomorrow to pick up his rally car. He's heading out on, not the Flying Scotsman, the Scottish Malts rally. Um, so he's heading out on the Scottish Malts in his Amazon, all ready to go, we reckon. Uh, David's car, uh, yeah, that, that came back from the Sahara. Um, we thought we had a few days to get on with some work, but um, yeah, but there's a load to be done to this. He's got no overdrive at the moment, which we think is just low oil level, um, and some other issues that need resolving after the Sahara. Um, gas hasn't been out at all. The 444's been out on a few nice road trips, running well. Let's go down the end. Yeah, we're, we're packed at the moment. So Richard Stagg, this has actually been uh, after, a, uh, so it was running just, you, you had to have a millimeter of choke on all the time for it to run cleanly. So it's just running just that little bit lean. And um, I thought, okay, well, let's. It, it could be the bimetallic in the Strombergs, potentially, but um, it didn't. It, it's not really behaving like a bimetallic problem, which generally stops the car dead. You leave it for an indeterminate amount of time for the car to cool down. It starts up and it runs fine, and then it stops dead again. That isn't what this was. It was just running a bit lean, and um, so I thought, okay, fine. Let's uh, let's put in the last evolution of the Stromberg, which had adjustable needles. You could wind them up and down. Um, now, it took a bit of doing because there was some confusion at the supplier as to which tool they were giving me first of all, and then the tool was mismanufactured. So it took a bit of a delay, but we stuck with it and they were very helpful. And, and once they accepted that there was a problem. Everything got resolved quickly. We've now got adjustable needles in here and the car's really running very sweetly. So we're looking forward to seeing Janet 10 days time um, for her to take Richard's stag out. Um, but we need to, yeah, and we need to do some more miles on it. But yeah, really interesting. I quite enjoyed that. Um, the conversion to adjustable needles in a Stromberg. And particularly for those of us running competition motors, with a Stromberg, that suddenly makes it much easier to tune and set up. Um, that's a little pallet of parts for Dan Willen, um, PV front wings and a front panel there. We're we'll just waiting for that. Uh, so when Dan comes down, we'll see if he wants any of this. Um, B16 supercharged. Amazon, that's in for a lighting issue and then to get the MOT sorted out, that's good. Amy's 142, I'm now allowing myself to run up to 7,000 RPM in that now. Um, I'm beginning to, feel, I mean, not beginning, still feeling really sweet, by far the smoothest engine I've ever built. Um, and the only difference this time was balancing up the combustion chambers. That was the difference. So um, that's quite interesting that, that that appears to have made a significant improvement to, to the smoothness of the engine. And if the engine's smooth, it's gonna be generating more power at the top end rather than vibrating. Um, Mike's, this used to belong to Mike and Lorna um, and has come back to us. Uh, the, customer, the owner is now selling it. Um, we haven't yet heard what price he wants, but um, we'll put an advert on our website and it'll be here for anyone who's after a prepared rally car. I don't think it's done an event since Mike and Lorna had it, uh, which is probably four years ago, um, but, uh, but it has been well maintained, it appears to us. Uh, yeah, another rally car that's not doing anything at the moment. Uh, the low cost, so Volvo engined space frame chassis, um, that's MOT'd, so that's all road legal and, um, and it's still a hoot to drive, absolutely massively entertaining. Right up the end, uh, up to the work, the, the, the uh, 
So Mike's current PV544, so that's um, just waiting to go to MOT today when I get Sophie's midget back. Uh, we'll take that out for MOT and then Mike's coming down to fetch it. Okay, so Raj's, Raj? Raj's um, B20, P1800, um, new engine, but hasn't run properly. Um, he's not happy with it, so it's come to us to set up. Now, we took, obviously, part of it, the front of the first things to set up is to make sure the jets are the right height. So off come the dash pots, um, check the needles. In fact, I had SM needles, which are generally very rich. So we put KNs in, because this is a KCAM engine. And even if they've gas flowed the head, a KN is probably gonna be the closest match we can get. So KN needles replaced the SMs that were in there. And then I took this, looked in the bottom of this carburetor with the dash pod off and look what was sitting down there so this washer was sitting just there You've got a photo. at the bridge like this, photo. like this photo okay so that's the first thing i found then we took the air filter off and discovered why where it had come from so that's the state it is there's the um, gasket there um so the other one, silly. And so what's the question that occurs to us immediately? Where's the bolt? Um, so basically, I didn't touch this, turn this engine um, at all. I'm going to have to whip. I'm going to have to whip off the manifolding and the exhaust and see if we can't find or at least prove where that the, the bolt is not sitting waiting to get fouled up in the valves um, and certainly when we fired it up yesterday i thought that was black smoke coming out the back end um, and that rather implies oil which rather means we could actually find it's already done some damage to the head that needs resolving anyway that's my next task is to um, whip off the entire manifolding, see if we can't find where that missing bolt is. Um, also, look at this. So they've got the early type carburetor with only two securing bolts here. And of course the late carburetor expects three bolts. So they're just dragging raw air through the two bottom holes rather than plugging them. I mean, I don't, you know, it, it, it's difficult to get hold of the three bolt, three bolt flange carburetor now. So you have to use these sometimes, but really, why, who would assemble an air filter allowing raw air to come into the carburettors? Um, yeah, a bit, bit disappointed with whoever did this work. Okay, um, that's it. Uh, I'll get on with this and hopefully later this afternoon, I'll have a recap. Okay, good news, we found the bolt. Emma, number four cylinder. And there is the bolt sitting on the exhaust valve. Uh, no, the intake valve, the intake valve. So, well, I'll fish that out and then we'll do a compression test. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna find a low compression on number four. Cylinder, so that means out with the cylinder head. Okay, uh, back in a few minutes with the compression test. Okay, we've got good news for Raj. Um, turns out compressions are good. 12 bar, 12 bar, 11 and a half, 12 bar. So, of course, it was number four that we were worried about. That's where it was lodged on number four inlet. Um, and we got good compression. So I've got no cause to pull the head. Um, whilst I'm here, we will sort out his heater transfer pipe, which is leaking. Um, but besides that, put it back together again and uh, put it on the Lambda sensor and set up the mixture. So um, there's the Lambda all ready to go. Um, Excellent, no, that is good news. I, I'm pleased, I'm pleased for us, I'm pleased for Raj that, that there is no apparent damage. So I think what had happened is that the bolt 
as you saw from see from the photograph has sat across the stem and hasn't tried dropping down into the valve so it's just the stem has been gently rubbing against it so it's just a little bit of abrasion there there's no hard contact with anything uh, we must infer so um, no good news good news uh, let's put it back together again and fire it up okay i was possibly a little premature in declaring that his head didn't go have to go to the uh, scholar our machinists sadly when i took all the manifolding off i thought there was something odd about this stud here and can you see that some blessed soul has half drilled out a sheared stud and then got bored there's a bit of metal here from it just about two threads in so what he decided to do it could have been she of course was put in that last stud with just two threads and left it like that now there's nothing i could do with that in situ um, and i would rather not helicoil so i'm really hoping that scholar are going to be able to squarely drill through that 5 16th unc and clean out the tap so i can just go straight back in with a 5 16th unc stud um, but yeah i just yeah i understand it's frustrating you've got a brand new engine and you shear off a stud i mean annoying but how can you then send it out to a customer with just two threads i don't understand that anyway good news um wonderfully scholar has said yeah bring it up they'll do it while i wait so i'm going to drive out there with the cylinder head and we'll sort it out okay talk to you soon bye